So what we've got to do is to download a version of the live GUI from Gen 2. Um, so let's get the web page up. Um, right, so the Gen 2 page is this one here, Gen 2, www.gen2.org. And if you click on the Get Gen 2 link here, what you'll need is this live GUI USB image. So you can see it's three gigabytes there. So it'll take a little while, short while to download. There is this minimal installation CD, which um, you can download and use that instead. It's a smaller download. As you can see, it'll fit on a CD as opposed to a DVD if you wanted to write it to um, a bit of spinning media. The disadvantage with that is there's no GUI environment, it's purely text mode, it is really what it says, it is a minimal installation, you've just got the bare bones, just enough to get going with installing Gen 2, so if you've got a little bit more experience with Gen 2, or maybe you're happy at the command prompt, then that will be sufficient, but I'll be using the live GUI because it's, it's handy to have a browser at the time that you're installing um, Gen 2. Um, it means you can just sort of browse the web, get the instructions for installing it while you're doing the commands. Whereas with the minimal installation, the only real, real way you could do that is to uh, use SSH to access the machine remotely um, after you've booted the CD and do everything remotely. So yeah, you just click on that and it will download. So once that's downloaded, we need to write it to a USB a device or some sort of bootable device um, probably will be a USB device what I found is quite handy to use is this tool called Rufus I can't stand what it's I remember what it stands for now but it, um, it does stand for something or other um, it's a slightly confusing bit of software but it is reliable in that it allows you to set up various options but when we're writing a, an ISO uh, especially Linux ISO, you don't want any of these options. You just want that image written without any tampering at all. Um, and it's not obvious how to ignore these, but I'll show you that when I uh, come to run it. Uh, there's several downloads here. It doesn't really matter what you're going to download because once you've downloaded it and written it, we're getting rid of Windows. Um, so it doesn't really matter how you install it. But I tend to use the portal one. You just download an .exe file, which is this icon here, and you just click on it, and it runs immediately without having to bother about installing or rebooting after the install or any, any such palaver like that. Um, the one thing will, will happen when you've created it is that it will create, or sorry, run it. It, it will create this .ini file and this um, directory, which it puts a log into. So you'll see them appear when you run it for the first time. Um, but apart from that, it's a, a useful little utility to have in, in Windows for Windows. So what you do is, oh, there's the download there. Uh, if you run it, yes. And what you do is you pick the um, device you want to write to. So if I put my USB in as an example, now, this is one I've actually already prepared, so I don't have to wait for it to write in the same way that I've uh, already downloaded the image, so I don't have to wait for it to download. Uh, so I've got to make sure I don't actually do anything with it. But you can see it's it's identified it straight away. So it's a 16 gigabyte flash USB device, uh, which is obviously big enough. Uh, the download is only about three megabyte, uh, three gigabytes, so it's plenty of room for that. Obviously, bear in mind that whatever's on there is going to be completely overwritten. It doesn't find a bit of free space to write the three gig image. It just wipes everything there. So make sure you use something that is free to use. And if you've got multiple USB devices, make sure you select the right one or unplug everything except for that device you want to write to. 
Then you want to um, select the image that you want to write. So there are other options here. Um, just leave it on the default, it says disk or ISO image. Click select and then navigate to where you've downloaded the ISO. So you can see I've put this file on the desktop. So I'll just click that. Um, don't need to worry about any of these really because um, the way we're going to write it is we're just going to write the image. So if I click start, it will come up with this option here and you want to do the write in DD image mode. And that's effectively the same as what we would do if we were in Linux. Um, I'm assuming that if you've used Linux 4, you know how to use the DD command. Um, I guess I can show that once we boot into the Linux image in case uh, you are on another distribution and you want to try Gen 2. But I won't click OK here because it will start writing. But yeah, if you just click OK, it took about, oh, I think about five minutes or so, maybe 10 minutes maximum to write on this USB stick. I found no matter how, mass, how fast USB sticks are, there comes a point where the buffers are filled and the memory is filled. And they just write really slow anyway, so you have to wait for them. They're still slow devices. They're just made apparently faster by the fact they've got buffers and the um, data's buffered on the computer memory as well. So um, you do still have to wait. If it was, for example, an external hard drive, it, it would probably take no more than a minute or so to, to write. So that's that. So once that's um, written, you should have a USB stick with the image on. Windows probably won't recognize it. Um, it's actually come up as DNE because I think there are two partitions on there. There's a boot partition and the actual data partition. Um, but apart from that, there's I don't think there's anything useful to look at. Yeah, it's come up here. Yeah, see, it, think, it thinks it's unformatted because it doesn't recognize the file system. So just make sure that you don't go and format it from win, within Windows. Otherwise, you'll find that you won't be able to boot anything. So all we need to do now is to reboot, restart. One thing I've got to do at the moment, if you've not done it before, is I've got to go into the BIOS to change the way the machine boots.